your merciful love, O oh God, we have received in the midst of your temple. Your praise, O oh God, like your name, reaches the ends of the earth. Your right hand is filled with saving justice. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, we humbly implore your majesty that just as your only begotten Son was presented on this day in the temple and the substance of our flesh, so by your grace we may be presented to you with minds made pure. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Malachi. <clears throat> Thus says the Lord God, Lo, I am sending my messenger to prepare a way before me. And suddenly there will come to the temple the Lord whom you seek, and the messenger of the covenant whom you desire. Yes, he is coming, says the Lord of hosts. But who will endure the day of his coming? And who can stand when he appears? For he is like the refiner's fire, or like the fuller's lie. He will sit refining and purifying silver, and he will purify the sons of Levi, refining them like gold or like silver, that they may offer due sacrifice to the Lord. Then the sacrifice of Judah and Jerusalem will please the Lord as in the days of old, as in years gone by. The word of the Lord. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord. Lift up, O gates, your lentils. Reach up, you ancient portals, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? It is the Lord. Who is this King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up, O gates, your lentils. Reach up, you ancient portals, that the King of glory may come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Since the children share in blood and flesh, Jesus likewise shared in them, that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who through fear of death had been subject to slavery all their life. Surely he did not help angels, 
but rather the descendants of Abraham. Therefore, he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every way, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest before God to expiate the sins of the people, because he himself was tested through what he suffered. He is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days were completed for their purification according to the law of Moses, Mary and Joseph took Jesus up to Jerusalem to present him to the Lord, just as it is written in the law of the Lord. Every male that opens the womb shall be consecrated to the Lord and to offer the sacrifice of a pair of turtle doves or two young pigeons in accordance with the dictate in the law of the Lord. Now there was a man in Jerusalem whose name was Simeon. This man was righteous and devout, awaiting the consolation of Israel, and the Holy Spirit was upon him. It had been revealed to him by the Holy Spirit that he should not see death before he had seen the Christ of the Lord. He came, into the, he came in the Spirit into the temple, and when the parents brought in the child Jesus to perform the custom of the law in regard to him, he took him into his arms and blessed God, saying, Now, Master, you may let your servant go in peace according to your word, for my eyes have seen your salvation, which you prepared in the sight of all the peoples, a light for revelation to the Gentiles and glory for your people, Israel. The Gospel of the Lord. Simeon was a man who has waited all his life awaiting for the consolation of Israel. Seems like that's something that we can probably mo relate to most recently, um, especially yesterday, uh, with the announcement of our new bishop, uh, Bishop Mario Darsenville. Um, yesterday feels like for a whole year we have been waiting for the consolation to come back to our diocese when Bishop Fab was transferred to the Archdiocese of Louisville and finally with his announcement yesterday and coming into our diocese and being presented to us, it seems like the consolation has truly returned to, uh, for, to our diocese here. And so I think it's something that we can probably easily enter into in our reflection today as we kind of look into it through the lens of uh, the, 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 the man, the elderly man, Simeon. Simeon was an elderly man. Uh, the gospel uh, described him as somebody who is righteous and devout. So we can imagine uh, for most of his life, probably for most of his adult life, Simeon has been waiting for the fulfillment that has been revealed to him, this consolation, the arrival of the Messiah. And so he might have spent maybe not just weeks, not just months, maybe, maybe even years, decades, many decades of just awaiting in patience for the arrival, for the fulfillment of the promises in the Old Testament. So we can probably imagine him, um, you know, to just see the magnitude of his patience, you know, just him being able to experience a lot of difficulties, experiencing a lot of disappointments, experiencing a lot of, uh, maybe encountering a lot of reasons to just give up on this waiting. But he trusted in the promise, he trusted in this prophecy, and held on to it, and finally he was able to see it. And that is why he's able to see now that, now that he has seen it, he's, he now can turn to the Lord and say, now, Lord, you can let me go. You can let me rest in peace now that I have seen the fulfillment of what you revealed to me many, many, many decades ago. And I think it's a great place for us to just kind of reflect on this patience of Simeon. And I think our Holy Father, Pope Francis, at one time when he was making a, a, um, a homily on this particular gospel on today's particular feast, Pope Francis presented a very interesting take on the patience of Simeon when he said that the patience of Simeon can actually reflect to us 
revealed to us the patience of God the Father, of a God who patiently waited for His people to see the consolation of their salvation. In a sense, Simeon's patience revealed to us that it was God the Father who waited and waited. And a notable theologian by the name of Romano Guardini once said that the, God, the, the patience of God the Father is revealed to us in order to remind us that God patiently waits for us in order to turn our lives around, in order to turn our lives back to Him. That the patience of the Father is revealed to us because He wants us to deal with our weaknesses first, in our own time, in our own pace, to be able to see that. And in a sense, what the Gospel revealed to us is of the Father rejoicing when His Son finally entered the temple. Because in a way, through the Son's entrance into the temple, the Son is bringing all of the people back into the temple, back into that relationship, that place of worship with the Lord. And I think that that's a great place for us to just reflect upon our own lives today as well, to just kind of look into how God is patient with us, waiting for us to turn our lives back to Him. And so let's sit with that image today. Let's sit with that patience of Simeon as it is reflected in our lives today, of, God, of how God has been patient to us. And maybe to continue to see through our Lord Jesus and the Eucharist how He desires to bring us back into the temple. And that should give us hope today that when we do turn to Him, He will, allow, he will reveal to us the joy of returning back to Him and we live in that joy and rejoice with Him as well. Christ shines as the light of revelation to the nations and the glory of his people. Let us bring our prayers to the Father who gave up his only Son for us. That the leaders of the church may continue to preach the word of revelation and nourish us with sound doctrine. Let us pray to the Lord. That we may be inspired by the obedience of Our Lady and Saint Joseph always to observe the precepts of the church. Let us pray to the Lord that the eyes of all people may see the salvation which God has prepared in His beloved Son. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord that the Lord may continue to prepare the heart of our new bishop as he prepared to transition into our diocese. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord <laughs> that our dead may go forth into God's peace and rejoice forever with Mary and all the saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Most loving Father, we present our prayers to you as once more we prepare to offer your Son the true light revealed to all peoples who lives and reigns forever and ever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, to become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become our spiritual drink.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the offering made with exaltation by your church be pleasing to you, O Lord, we pray. For you will that your only begotten Son be offered to you for the life of the world as the Lamb without blemish, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For your co-eternal Son was presented on this day in the temple and revealed by the Spirit as the glory of Israel and light of the nations. And so we too go forth rejoicing to encounter your salvation and with the angels and saints praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church is spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Mario, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints, who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope at the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. By these holy gifts which we have received, O Lord, bring your grace to perfection within us. And as you fulfilled Simeon's expectation that he should not see death until he had been privileged to welcome the Christ, so may we, going forth to meet the Lord, obtain the gift of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Um, just one announcement. So tomorrow, uh, with the memorial of St. Blaise, we will have the blessing of throats at the end of Mass, at the end of 7 a.m. Mass tomorrow. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that never was it known that anyone who fled to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, was left unaided. Inspired by this confidence, I fly unto thee, O Virgin of Virgins, my mother. To thee do I come, before thee I stand, sinful and sorrowful. O Mother of the Word incarnate, despise not my petition, then thy mercy hear and answer. O salutaris hostia, que celipa dis hostium, el apremu hostilia, da roba fel oxia.